Hello Collective, welcome back to the Ascended Divination Priestess channel. You are greatly appreciated. Real quickly before I forget, um, I had a dream about a, a, a brother of color. Um, and typically when I see like uh, these brothers getting locked up and stuff, it, it just tears are ripping my soul. It's really disheartening. But in my dream, what I saw is, I don't know if this brother got hired to do something to a feminine energy and he didn't expect to get caught for it. And whoever hired him was like nowhere to be found after he was getting locked up, right? So what I saw in my dream were three men sitting in a, a prison cell, right? One of them was fresh in there, like he was new. You know when they say fresh meat, he didn't understand how the prison system works. And he's sitting in there yapping away with uh, what I've learned they call the booty bandits in prison. And he didn't know who he was talking to the whole time. So they're sitting in the prison cell by the wall, of course. And he doesn't realize that they're playing mental games with him. And they're telling him, like, man, you got to be careful. There's a lot of booty lovers in here. Like, you got to be careful. Don't let them take yours. Like, I've been in here for... Blah, 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 years and ain't nobody touch me i ain't never I ain't, i'm not never gonna let anybody touch me right something like that and this moron is sitting there obviously you're new to the environment he doesn't understand how yeah and he doesn't even realize he's talking to the booty bandits okay so he's like he tells them oh i'm gonna protect mine but when he started talking, before he opened his mouth, I was like, there's something off about this one. He seems sauce. So he's like, oh, I'm going to protect mine so today. And ain't nobody going to take nothing from me. Huh? I'm looking at him like, baby, you don't know. You're talking to your future husband. Um, So it goes to like the next scene. He, he's talking about he's going to fight for his to the death of him. And the next scene I see is that the man... Remember, there were three men in sitting in that prison cell. The one in the middle was the booty bandit of all the booty bandits in the prison. Uh, they're fighting because he's trying to take him, right? And they're fighting in there. But the way this fresh meat brother was fighting, baby, I, I just knew his. I just knew his future. He was a law out. People, listen. Some of the stuff I see is traumatizing enough for me. And that's sometimes like, I, I, that's why sometimes when, you know, when I see things about people trying to isolate light workers and things like that so they can feel reject. Like the things we see are traumatic enough for us. So we got to deal with that, that on a daily basis. What happened to this man is horrific. Though... <laughs> That other man fought him until he was weak and tired and could do nothing. And he picks him up like a... He picks this grown man up like it's nothing. Because whoever this middle man was was huge. He picked him up like it was nothing. Held him like this in the air and bit one of his cheeks. And... The, the newcomer, he said, no, I ain't ready. I'm not ready. No, hold on. Hold. I'm like, God, Lord. And I'm so glad, like, Spirit didn't even let me see the, the rest of it. Like, as soon as whatever was supposed to happen was about to happen, I left from there. And I realized that I was in a men's prison, either in a different country or this is one of those states where like the prison system is just like think of like Mississippi. Like the Mississippi prison system is horrendous. Um, but basically, I'm I'm like tra traveling through this prison, and when I said just about every other cell I went past, there was something like that going on. Like somebody was being, you know taking or just something horrendous was happening to them so when i woke up i was trying to put two and two together um because first of all the situation in this prison was just not humane like whatever prison this is i saw it was not humane you know how like 
they show those cubicles on in the movies where you have like the call center and it's a bunch of cubicles. Think of that like you have this big room and so it's a bunch of cubicles, but the cubicles, the walls of the cubicles are built out of cement. So anybody can see anything. There's no privacy, nothing. Like you're literally in this cubicle. You can see what's going on in the cubicle across from you. Go next, you'll see the next cubicle. It ain't no privacy. There's no roof over the cubicles. It's just a bunch of cubicles in the middle of a room and they're on the walls of the room, right? And literally in every every other or every two, every three cubicles is something horrendous taking place, you all. Like I whew. and then the prison it seems so old. Like even some of the walls of these cubicles were not all the way there. Like some of them had like falling apart and things like that. Whoever I saw was a bro it was three brothers. I'm so sick of hearing you all go into the, the penitentiary. I'm so... Like, it just breaks my heart every time I hear about one of you getting locked up. Um, I think I was showing this dream to help you in events. Because typically when people are out here in the free world, they think they are a bully. Uh, they think they're tough. Until you get locked up and then what? Okay, uh, you may think that you're tough out here. You're not tough. And I think there's a side of you you've been hiding anywhere your whole life. <laughs> I said whole life and the world came out. There's a side of you you've been hiding your whole life. You haven't been living in your truth. So I don't know if you're okay with getting locked up because you go that way anyways. But what's going to be happening is not something that is going to be pleasure for you. Okay. Uh, maybe you're feeling like, well, I finally get to be with who I want to be with, but it's not the way you it's not the way you want to be with somebody, sir. I don't know if you watch me and someone paid you to go and do some something to someone. You may not want to because you're going to lose your freedom. What I saw in my dream was you either spending a ridiculous amount of years in prison, and it's like everybody's gonna forget about you. Whoever's making you promises won't be sending you nothing. Lies. They told you lies. Uh, it's either you spending a ridiculous amount of years in prison or you're going to be at your final destination because whoever um, is going to be charging you or is watching you to see what it is you're about to do, maybe they're going to make sure this could be like a higher fan, the leader of the prison or the leader of an organization that's watching you to see what it is you are supposed to be doing what you were hired to do and when they charge you it's going to be them making sure that you get every sentence uh, every year that you're supposed to get let's say if you're going in for pow, 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 whatever amount of years you're supposed to serve for that he or she is going to make sure you get those exact years and if they can add more to it he's going to do all he can in his will to make sure you get those years added to it. And he's going to make sure you don't you don't uh, serve one day less than what you're supposed to. So, something may be very personal for a, 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 a king of swords, higher thing energy out here. And people don't realize it. But if I was you, whoever gave you some type of contract to go and do something to someone... I don't know if they hire you to go in on a live someone or to go and dishonor someone, disgrace someone. You may want to walk away. There's a there's something where this contract that you received has been given to other people before you and they relinquished their contract and decided to walk away from it. And that's because either something happened to them or uh, they felt some type of uncomfortable spirit. Uh, or energy about what they were told to do and they just kind of walked away but for some reason you feel like you gotta you're the man for the job you're gonna get it done and blah 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 wherever you wherever you are going it's not somewhere that you're going to survive like you're one of those ones they're gonna have to put you in solitary confinement for your protection and even in there you may not be safe because the guards in that prison, they don't care. They don't care. They may even orchestrate something being ha something happening to you. Like they don't care. So 
whatever it is you were hired to do, if I was you, I would walk away, leave that sucker out in the cold, and move on with your life. I think a feminine energy may have hired you to do something, take some type of reckless and impulsive action towards someone else um, because of some type of anger, jealousy, or she doesn't want someone to receive something. Um, that don't have nothing to do with you. It's what you need to be telling her. I don't know if she paid you a good amount of money. You need to tell her that don't have nothing to do with you or take the money and disappear. What is she going to do? Say that she paid you to unalive someone, dishonor someone, disgrace someone, and you didn't do it? Can't do nothing. So if I was you, you either need to disappear away from her or him, whoever's hiring you, or take the money and disappear. So at the end of the day, you either disappear or you disappear. You you get my you get my flow. Listen, this is your warning ahead of time. Don't go throwing your life away because where you're about to end up will not be a situation where you are happy. I know there are people that like to go to prison because of that. Um, I remember reading a story about a man that came out of prison. He had been there for, I don't know, they said 40 years or something. And this woman went and got married to him. And he's on there talking about he misses prison because he uh, missed having, I don't, you know, the B-O-O-T, you know, that word. I'm so sorry this reading may be a little bit, you know. Uh, but I'm trying to emphasize to a brother that's about to throw his life away. Because of something he does not understand. Someone hired you based on a lie. Someone hired you based on anger and hatred for somebody else. Uh, she wants you to take some, someone out or do something to someone solely because she hates that person for her own insecurities. Whoever she's sending you towards didn't do anything to her. So whatever she's hiring you to do, you're going to be the one facing the consequences of that for your life okay and she won't be nowhere to when i said nowhere she ain't gonna be nowhere to help you not putting money on your books nothing even the money she paid you if that king of swords higher than energy can get it out of your account he's gonna take it out to make sure you don't listen whoever you all are being watched by don't care like someone <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this energy. It's not that he doesn't care, but someone is very ba 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 ba. Like he's by the rules. He don't care if you are family, your friend. He is by the rules, and if you break the rules, he don't care if you are his nephew, his brother. You broke the law. You gonna have to do your time. So you may want to think about that. Whoever is higher, I'm telling you, this man is in the upright. <clears throat> If you may want to walk away because whatever judgment you end up receiving, it's not going to be in your favor, okay? Uh, for, because what people are trying to do, and I feel like it's a collaboration, but there's one very angry and bitter woman that just won't let go. She wants to keep going with something, even though everybody else may even either be tired or it's just a few group of people that are left that are still trying to carry on some type of narrative whatever you all are planning to do even if it's just one person that takes a uh uh, uh <laughs> that heeds the wisdom from this message walk away it's not it's a trap you're coming after someone who's like a light worker is what i picked up on like a star scene anytime you're coming after those kind of energy it's a trap for you you are trapping yourself. It never goes well. It never goes well. Okay? It never goes well. I'm telling you. Okay? It never goes well. You got people out here angry because the truth is out about uh, a star seed. They've been trying to hide someone for a long time or been coming after someone for a long time. And you got people angry because the community knows the truth. And the community maybe wants to balance something out. The community wants to give something to a star seat or something and then you got a crazy woman behind the scenes hiring people hiring men to go and do something to that star seat L listen sir brother walk away go find you something else to do go invest in something that you like she gives you that money take that money and go invest it in something else she can't do nothing it's not something that's going to be held against you uh because listen she paid you to do something illegal 
She can't come to you and say, I paid you to go on a lot this star see. You took my money. I want my money or I'm going to call the cops on you. Let her call the cops. And then you can tell them everything that she told you to do. Make sure you have a recording too. I remember watching this video. This woman was, uh, <laughs> it was two sisters, like two women. Um, they were selling, you know, drugs and they went and, uh, what did they do? They sold drugs to a guy. The guy took the drugs, but didn't give them the money. <laughs> So, these two idiots, you obviously know you're doing something illegal. She goes and calls the police because he didn't pay her her money for the drugs. So, the cop is looking at her. You know that you know the cops, they'll listen to you. They don't, they don't got to, but they'll listen to you. You know, he's standing there and he's listening to her talk about how she gave him drugs. It's a business transaction. He's supposed to give her money and blah, 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 blah. And he didn't give her her money, and she wants the cop to make sure that I'm looking like, girl, you just you 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 just don't get it, like something just don't click. So he stands there and he lets her get done talking, and he asks her, so let me get this straight. <laughs> yeah, he said, let me get this straight. I want to make sure I'm right. You called me out here. Because you are selling drugs and somebody didn't pay for the drugs. And I'm not saying, and this woman wasn't selling like Mary Joanna. No, she was selling the hard stuff, you all, like the powder. Uh huh. So you called me out here because someone didn't pay you for selling drugs that you're not supposed to be selling in the first place. You do know it's illegal. And she said, yeah, but it's a business. This is how I make my money. I'm like, you don't lost your raggedy mind. I'm going to leave you right there. And let him put those <laughs> and watch him put those hangers on you. And that's exactly what happened. So it's something like that, sir. She gives you the money, take the money, and disappear. You don't got no business in the penitentiary. At all. Because you don't, you know how people, when they're out here, they think they're tough. Oh, they're the, 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 the Billy Bad SS or whatever you want to call them. Uh-huh. Oh, hmm. uh, 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 they think they're the real, you know, pop out, pop out killers or something. Until they get into the penitentiary and meet the real killers. Yeah, that's what's about to happen to you. Don't do it, sir. Please don't throw it. We got enough brothers in there that don't even need to be in there. Please don't throw your life away over someone's hatred for another person. You don't even know the person you're going towards. They didn't ever do nothing to you. I understand it's a job you're doing, but this job is about to end your life, end your freedom. Okay? Don't do it. Do not uh, do it. It's just going to be you. Like your, your life over. Just, just done. And you may even be in there begging for mercy because... If someone may end up passing you around in there and you'll be in there begging them to stop doing something and you know no one can step in to help you. The guards ain't going to help you, nothing. And if you snitch, it makes it even worse for you. Like you all need to understand, things are not like the people in there, they operate by a different system, different principle. Okay? It's all about character, who can vouch for you. If When you go in there, from what I've learned, they're trying to find out either if you are a snitch or you are a pedal pedal. You know what I mean? Or if you've done something to women or children. And if you fall into any of those three categories, you ain't going to have no peace in there. So, whatever you are being hired to do falls in one of those three categories. You may want to back up. Don't throw your life away. Please. I saw you front and center. Like, I couldn't talk to you. I was just meant to see you, uh, read you, read your energy. Maybe I was being shout. Maybe they were showing you to me so I could tell you ahead of time what's in your future if you take the path that you are on or you are being offered. 
and there's another gentleman there's something where it's not you brother but someone else you you're going to prison there's something you've been doing there's something you've been doing to a star seed uh yeah you're going to prison there's someone out here that just feels like it's their job to cause someone heartache. It's their job to steal from someone. It's their job to take from someone. It's their job to cause blockage for someone. They feel entitled. Like someone is mentally unstable and he is, you're getting locked up for a long time. So you've been doing something repeatedly and I don't think you know that you are being watched. Um, and when you get hit with those papers or those the years or something, you won't even know how it happened because you, from what I picked up, you feel like you are protected, like you're invincible, like no one knows what it is you're doing, or you may feel so invincible that even if people know what you're doing, you don't care. You're like, shoot, I'm, I'm going to be okay. I've got these people backing me up. I'm part of an institution now, or, you know, I'm, I'm a, a, a master of disguise. I can, I know what I'm doing whatever uh nobody will ever find out he'll never press charges she'll never press charges he or she may not press charges but there's somebody else that's pressing charges so you're going to the penitentiary there's something you keep doing that is illegal and you feel so invincible because you feel like you've been doing it for a long time and Nothing has happened, and that's because someone is watching you. Someone has been working meticulously to put all the puzzle pieces together, and you are their last piece that he or she is putting right in there, and once they're done, it's a psh, gotcha. And then when, when you get served, you won't even know how it happened, or when you get arrested, you won't know how it happened, what happened, how did they find out. That's because, baby, they're, they've been on to you for a long time. Like, that's, I'm telling you, baby, you are trapped. You are trapped. You are so trapped, it don't even make sense. So you may want to pray with, uh, it's too late anyway. You're, you're, you're going to the penitentiary, and it ain't going to be good for you in there. Everybody thinks that they're tough until they go around the real tough guy. Everybody think they're Billy Bad ASS until they meet the real Billy Bad ASS. You're about to be amongst the real hitters. The real hitters. And you won't make it at all. You ain't gonna make it. As long as soon as they find out <laughs> what it is you did to someone genuine and authentic, baby, you're gonna need a different kind of protection in there. But you'll be trapped. Can't go nowhere. Yeah, so good luck. You're going to need some healing, some recovering. And as soon as you heal and recover, they're going to come back to do it again. So you can't, your body is going to get to a point where it's like, there's really, there's no healing. Because you'll always be hurting in different places. Like, it, like it's like when someone sees you, they're just going to get pissed up and shank. Uh, just some like something horrendous. You're about to be in some type of predicament that you like. I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. I don't care how angry I am at somebody. I would not wish this on anybody. But some type of situation you put yourself in, and you don't understand how it's about to get exposed and how you're about to get cut. But this is gonna be you in prison, having to heal and recover repeatedly because people ain't gonna give you no breaks. It's gonna be like, on, every time they see you, like on site, on site, on site. They say, oh, where, where is Billy? He's in the hospital. Okay, I'm gonna wait till he get here. I'm gonna be here when that mother ever get here. Cause you know, some of them, they've been in there for 10, 15, 20 years. Some of them, they aren't going anywhere. They have life sentences they're serving. So that's their, final destination so they don't care what they do in there what happens to you so <laughs> healing and recovery is about to be your first and last name yeah this game are sideways so you could have had some type of uh temporary victory that has kind of just it was like frivolous there was no point it's like it's that like you have a group of people, and I don't know why you are are filled with this much hate for someone else. It's like a whole family working together to end someone, to tear someone down, to destroy someone, all because of hate. 
why you hate one person this much, it don't even make no sense. It said people are, people have gotten so invested in something for so long that they don't even have the capability to rub two senses together to come up with common sense. It's like all common sense has gone out the door because of their soul hatred for somebody else that has done nothing to them. It's solely because either someone's, because of someone's look or someone's, is there something physical that you don't have any control over? Um, it could be like your body shape or the, the fact that people like you or the fact that you are beautiful or the fact that you are self-sufficient. The fact It's something very simple that a whole group of people don't like you for and it's not something like you can change. Like let's say for beauty, people can't change how they look. I mean, you can have plastic surgery, whatever, but you're born the way you look, right? You grow up, your face, your, your facial structures, they come into alignment, everything, you know, fits and whatever, however we want to put it. But at the end of the day, you don't have control over how you look when you're born, unless you're one of those crazy people to go and get plastic surgery to look a certain way. Your, your beauty is your beauty. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So you could have a group of people that find someone to be very beautiful and they, they hate you for that. Or you could have a man that finds you to be beautiful and these people hate you for that. It's something like that that you have no control over. Or it could be like your body shape. Maybe you're skinny. Maybe you're skinny thick. Maybe whatever it is, they don't like you for that. Maybe you're gifted. They don't like you. It doesn't have anything to do with you doing anything to these people. It's all because they hate you for who you are. Um, so... Yeah, <laughs> for who you are. You're starcy in the upright, and it pisses these people off. They can't have their way with you as far as blocking your forward movement, blocking opportunities, and things of that nature. It's just, it's all based on hate. It's all based on hate. Maybe you're, if you're coming up as a starcy, you're a healer. So the things you do, maybe how you carry yourself, helps other people see life from a different perspective or it helps you other people and there are people that don't like that it pisses them off that you're a healer okay you're a healer and they don't like the fact that you are protected it could be someone that's protecting you and um you don't know it and if there is thank goodness for that um, because a lot of the times those star energies they tend to be alone in the physical they may not be alone in the spirit but in the physical, they tend to be alone. But every situation that you are in, the universe was, will always orchestrate something for maybe just one person in a community or something to look out for you. But they'll do it in a way where that person is protected because if people find out that that person is protecting you, then it becomes a problem for them. But there's some type of hatred that is taking place solely because of either how you look, uh, maybe how you carry yourself. Um, I don't know what it is. Like, you're different from these people. You are different. Like, you are... You're different. Your energy is very unique. It's very eccentric. You could be very vibrant. Something like that. And these people are a little bit more on the toxic side of things. Uh, very narcissistic. Uh, their main goal is to stop you, stop you from having some type of victory, stop you from having some type of new beginning, stop some type of confession from taking place. You may have a couple that wants to confess something to you and people don't want that happening. It's something like that. So um, it's not going to go in their favor because this truth is already out. People already have a higher understanding, already know ever why you walked away exactly from a King of Cups too. Um, that has been working hard to destroy you and take you down. He does like whoever this King of Cups is. I've been picking up on. There's a King of Cups within an Emperor's life. I, they're not lovers. These are two people that could be like either brothers or family, and he's been coming up consistently. There's a King of Cups that works with a uh, Emperor. Either he works for you, you hire him to do work for you or something or you two have been around each other for a long time and he has been working very hard to make sure that you and an empress energy do not come together i don't know if he sees this woman as immature or it's the fact that she can see right through him i, I think it's that she can see right through him <laughs> 
Her spirituality bothers him with this pitch of cuss out here. It bothers him because he's not able to pretend to be what he's not. So it's something about her seeing through him is that she can see straight. Like he's been carrying some type of facade for a long time. But when it comes to this woman, there's no facade. It's like she sees exactly what she needs to see and which he's terrified of. It bothers him because he's not able to fool this woman. Like, no matter what he does. Like, this is someone that walks around with a mask. Pretending that he, it's a mask. Like, trying to hide who he really is. But whoever this energy is, sees right through this man. And it bothers him. This is a king of cups in an emperor's life. Like, this could be, like, someone you see as a brother. Or this is someone who is your brother. I don't think it's your brother. I think it's someone you see and treat as a brother but he's very bothered by by this yeah this genuine energy i'm telling you you could be the leader of a community something is coming to an end the illusions and things putting an end to a, an illusion and by a queen of cups i'm telling you you all could be watching this person whatever it is but whoever is in your life that king of cups baby he's a piece of work i don't know how he's saying uh oh Fooling you, especially if you're coming up as a higher fan. I don't know how he's been fooling you, causing you illusions all these years. But someone is very deceptive, manipulative, may even try to use the word of God to come across as authentic. He's not. He's not. Okay, he is not. He is not. Whatever people have been doing out here, it is not being protected. People and sisters ha have moved away from them. There's some type of protection that people had and is being taken away. Or maybe they felt that their ancestors were protecting them. It's not. They're not. <laughs> it's nothing but chaos. Okay? There's no protection. These people dibble and dabble into some type of magic. But they try to do it from behind the scenes. Except the kind of magic they dibble and dabble into is very dark. And sometimes these kind of people too, they don't even realize they're dibble, dibbling and dabbling into dark magic. They're working very hard to, <laughs> to bind someone, isolate someone. And I'm telling you, whatever they're doing is not secure, is not blessed, is not supported. That the spirit realm is not, like they're trying to cause problems in someone's work. They don't want someone to receive some type of uh, position uh, to keep working, to stay committed, something of that nature. They're, some type of decision about a position is not what they want to hear. It is something that is going in the favor of the star seed. So these people are trying to make sure that they can change their decision. It's, it's not changeable. It's something that is finalized. And they're pissed off about that. Um, what I was going to say is sometimes people that are into, yeah, it's not going in their favor. They don't like the fact that you are going on some type of new path, taking some type of new direction, or you're going within about someone that's coming towards you. A king of wands coming towards you with an offer and it's going to lead to victory for you. And which means there's going to be some type of rejection for somebody else. And I don't know who this other somebody else is. I've been picking up on a King of Pentacles for a long time. Uh, maybe arguing with people behind the scenes. Whatever this is. I don't know what this is. But there are two people that are going to end up getting married. Uh, but what I was going to say is. These kind of people sometimes they don't even understand. That they're into some type of form. Some form of dark magic. Manipulation is a form of dark magic. Lying to intentionally cause problems in, in people's lives. That's a form of dark magic. Causing still mates, doing all kinds of like this little underhanded or big underhanded stuff. That's a form of dark magic. And people oftentimes when they're doing these kind of things, they don't see it as black magic, but it that's what it is. Because you're acting out of a place of selfishness. People act out of either ego, insecurities, uh, 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 uh desperation. Um, I forgot what the other one is. But there are typically four reasons why fear. There are typically four reasons why people do things. It's out of fear, out of ego, out of desperation, um, and insecurities. There is something here where it's that 
these people maybe they've been acting out of those areas for a long time but they don't see it as dark magic but that's what it is especially with the uh eight of swords being out here everything is about manipulation people these people do things because they get a thrill out of causing other people problems causing mayhem these are people that will even say they will come together to create scenarios that are not even true like they want let's say like you're renting a house a condo an apartment typically condos are not rented they got to be paid for in paid for in full for you to stay there or you got to pay i think like half of some something like that uh let's say you're renting an apartment let's go with that and you got someone that's into dark magic right and they want you to get put out of your apartment or whatever and they start making all these false complaints to the landlord or the police department that you are doing something you shouldn't be doing you're making a lot of noise they're sick and tired of you uh you're always causing trouble but then you know maybe they do some type of investigation and it's like well you said this person makes a lot of noise it doesn't even seem like anybody lives in their apartment but somebody does right it's because your light is bothering that person's demon and because your light bothers their demon they're trying to get rid of you so that they can go back to being demonic in peace okay so it's something like that it's that people came came together it's a collaboration to cause you mayhem been paying people for a long time maybe paying a couple a wealthy couple investing in a family or something to stop some type of truth some type of new beginning some type of communication from coming in about work because they want you to stay isolated and things like that. They want you to move on. Um, but you moving on is more so them wanting you to move on in poverty. poverty move on in like stay in uh, isolation. Being rejected. Being alone. You no know, support and things like that. And this is what people in the dark community typically do to light workers. It's like isolate them reject them and, and a lot of the times the mistake that they make they don't understand like light workers tend to thrive in, in, in environments where they're by themselves because one we can communicate easier with the source uh those uh the energies that need to communicate with us from other dimensions and things like that like if you have spirits that want to talk to you you being by yourself you have more ample time to communicate with them without interferences and things like that so it's not really a problem um and i think sometimes that's what these dark workers don't understand they'll also like sometimes go into your childhood try to find our dirt on things that you experienced so that they can uh, uh use that against you to cause you problems and things like that but again if someone is at the stage where they are like a star C, a, a high priestess in the upright, and they're having like this ace of swords out here, that means that they've probably done the work to heal, okay? So whatever traumas you're looking for in their past, in their childhood or whatever, is not relevant to who they are in the current time. Um, it's, they, they haven't allowed their trauma to be like... A part of your identity on a daily basis they say yeah i went through that it is what it is i've healed from that i've recovered i'm moving on new day new life something like that right but these kind of people they don't understand because their traumas are still hunting them they have been healed from what it is they experience they're still out here trying to be part of a sector they don't understand that they're still in the matrix um, they're still, tr so they're still trying to use tactics that'll work on them, things that bother them to bother you. But it's like, you are in the matrix. I'm not in the matrix. I'm outside of the matrix. I can help you get out of the matrix if you want. But the hatred these kind of people have for your energy is what prevents them from being able to heal and move on and get out of the matrix. People People complicate the whole matrix thing. It's that, oh, the matrix, the matrix, ain't no way out of the matrix. That's because people are thinking of a physical way to get out of the matrix. It's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual, mental, emotional, uh, yeah, spiritual, mental, and emotional uh, 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 removal from the matrix. It's not something physical until you've completed your incarnation for whatever lifetime you are in. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. Like 
they are using tactics on someone that has already healed. Well, this is a source to the Page of Cups. Someone has already healed and they are committed no matter what people are doing with this Eight of Swords out here. Someone is still committed to their path. So you can grudge up all of the traumas they experienced in their childhood or who broke up with them, who broke their heart or mom didn't love them, dad didn't love them. They're, they don't care about that kind of stuff because at this stage, especially the Ace of Swords kind of stage, all of that they've dealt with. And you see how this page of uh, this Five of Swords is behind them? They've already dealt with all of those problems, right? So now they're in a different energy, but you're still trying to use tactics from the past to have them, you know, relinquish who they've become and to walk away from everything that they've done to better themselves and things like that. But that's because those are things that will work on you as a dark worker. That's something that will work on you. That's where you are. You're at like love, and I'm not saying this to be like uh, egocentric. It's like a dark worker being at level one, and this is someone you know, like level twelve, and they're trying to bring that person back down to them. And you got to understand before you even get to that person at level twelve, they already see you coming, and they already know why you're coming. And you're kind of wasting your time coming towards them, something like that. Uh, which reminds me, I had an experience not too long ago. I typically go to like the library with my kids. And my daughter and I were sitting, because um, I'm doing something on my phone. I was doing some work on my phone. And I was like, just give me a little bit of time. Let me finish this work and then we can leave. The library had closed at the time. So we were sitting outside uh, waiting for my work to be done because we were using the, the internet there right um so um and i didn't want to have to stop and then come home and start it again so I was, let me just sit out here real quickly i'll finish it and then we can go so we're sitting there kind of chatting away and i see this woman walking up the stairs and instantly i just knew like something was up and i didn't want her to get too close to us so i was just like uh it's closed she said oh no it's not closed they're open till eight i said no it's Saturday, they closed. <laughs> they closed at uh at five. Uh, they're closed. Uh, and she said, no, I'm pretty sure they're open till eight p.m. on the weekends. And she gets up there. Uh, I didn't want her to come up there, but obviously she <laughs> she gets up there. She sees the sign. The sign says that they close at five. And she said, oh, I could have sworn it closed at eight p.m. I said, no, it closes at five p.m. But she kept. I just let me live. I'm gonna just let her figure it out. So we're sitting there in this woman's energy. I just don't feel like there's something authentic about it. Something is just off. And she is like sitting there watching. I don't know like if she was watching something, but she kept getting these really loud notifications. Like something was, something kept pinking. And I'm like, there's something she's doing that she probably shouldn't be doing. But it's like some type of pinging kept coming, coming in. It was like, boom, boom. But she wasn't responding, even though she had the phone in her hand. So I don't know, like there's something that was going on. But I didn't say anything. So I'm trying to finish my work. I get my daughter's phone and I get on like the news app. I had YouTube open in the news app. And I'm reading about Kanye West and how he has his wife, you know, out here looking like a, a P star. Um, I, And I had read something about him trying to get into that industry or whatever. And I'm just like, you know, I'm talking to my daughter. I'm like, it's so sad. She looks so, she looks so sad. You know, it's like, it, it's like the way he carries her around. It's just so sad. Like he's, he has like dehumanized, dehum he has dehumanized this woman. Like he just treats her like a tool. Like she's walking out with all of her particulars just out for the world to see no type of self-respect or nothing and i don't think it's that she doesn't respect herself i think this is because of how he's made her to be in public uh and that's the thing a lot of these people they see these rappers and they get so oh it's a kanye west he wants to talk to me and i feel like that should be like your your uh warning sign to run the other direction um but anyway so i'm kind of telling my daughter i'm like it's really sad how he has this woman out here looking like he like she just she has nothing on and she looks so miserable in uh the pictures and things like that um 
And I would say you don't want to see these pictures. They're very inappropriate. And just, just know that she looks very sad in the picture. And my daughter and I were talking about it. And then here comes this woman that came up the stairs that I didn't want coming up the stairs because I just knew there was something going on, right? And she said, oh, what is that you're watching? Is that a uh, TikTok? I'm like, no, I'm on YouTube, but I'm reading the news. Anyways, um, she said, oh, yeah, because I'm a psychic. In, I'm a, a world-renowned psychic investigator, and I'm just looking like we and said nothing about psychic or nothing here. We're talking about Kanye West and his uh, wife. He's trying to turn into a peace star, but okay, pop off. And she starts telling me, and what I picked up on is that she was sent to have some type of conversation with me to make things look like what they were not. It's like oftentimes when people uh, listen to uh, light workers talking, we're very intellectual. We're very sh sharp people. But because the people we're talking to oftentimes are not awakened yet and they are not privy to a lot of the information that we have or the information we're giving, they'll be quick to label us as either schizophrenic or delusional or mentally unstable, things like that, right? Which is very typical. Those are typical terminologies that are used to describe light workers, uh, especially divinationums. Like practitioners, people that do tarot and things like that, those are the typical words they'll use to describe us. They say that we are schizophrenic, we're delusional, we're uh, mentally uh, incapable, mentally ill, and things like that. Just all these really silly words, right? So I, uh, what I picked up is that she was there to record a conversation, which is why her phone kept picking, like the phone was being prepped for the conversation to start and someone was supposed to be on the other end listening. Um, so she's blowing up about how she's a star C and she's not from this planet and that um she has people coming after her that have open uh, 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 loans in her name, they have cars and properties in her name and that people are having plastic surgery to look like her and all kinds of stuff. And the whole time my baby girl and I were sitting there trying not to be unprofessional because, honey, my kids and I, we come across as very stoic people, but we are goofy as heck uh, towards each other when it's not one of us. Like, it, I had three kids, and the youngest one is four, and the older two, maybe they're just as stoic as me when we don't know you. Uh, but we're very kind and polite to people. So the both of us, we're sitting there, and we're just saying, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, that's true, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, because we're trying to kind of tell her we're not really interested in this conversation. My middle kid, the child, she's just like me, you all. I don't know how, but the child is just like me. And she's, she knows that when something is going on and I don't want to be a part of it, I'll typically just put my head down or just say, uh-huh, yep, that's true, yep, you're right, uh-huh. And she has picked up that same behavior, so... If you're having some type of conversation she don't want no parts of, she'll be very polite with you. She'll look up look up at you, have eye contact, put her head back down. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, that's true. Uh-huh, really? Like, she's trying to not have you feel uncomfortable or feel like you're just talking to yourself, but in reality, you are. We didn't want to be mean to her, so we just sat there and listened. And this woman is just going on and on and on and on about how people are trying to have plastic surgery or people have been having plastic surgery to look like her. She's a world-renowned psychic and she's this and she's that and she has a whole cult that's after her and there was a racist man that uh, was mean to she and her kids and it took her 30 years to give him a piece of her mind. She went to his door and knocked on there and told him exactly what it is that she thought of him or whatever. And the whole time, I'm just trying to figure out how did a, 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 a article about Kanye West and his wife turn into this kind of conversation? And she started telling me about how her 15-year-old uh, daughter, you know, had been annihilated and all of that. And I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, but the energy just kept getting weird. She said, oh, you know, and, and, and I'm not from here. I'm I'm a, I'm a star C. I'm from a different uh, place. I come from far, far away. And I'm just listening on and everything in my bone is trying to have me not ask this woman any questions because one, if I decide to be petty, it's not going to be cute because I'm going to be the one to be to say, oh, you're not from here. You're not from Earth. Where are you from? So I had to check my petty bone that day. 
Anyway, so I'm trying to maintain the conversation in like a professional way, a mature way, because my goofiness is like about to come out. I'm trying to hold a laugh within. My kid is trying to hold a laugh within because this woman is just, it's a joke. Once she's saying that she's a star seed, but you don't carry yourself as that. Like this woman came out we could smell the cigarettes from the stairs like she didn't even have to come up the stairs we could smell the cigarettes like someone smoking a pack of cigarettes a day or something and she comes up there lights her cigarette i don't smoke those and i'm just looking at god dang it like can you go away and go smoke down there or something but i'm just because my kid is around i'm just doing everything to stay as polite as possible my patience is about this thing with some situations and this was one of it because this woman started having like inappropriate conversations around my kid, talking about how people are kidnapping uh, uh teenagers and children and you know organ hair harvesting and things like that. And I'm just like, what is <sighs> patience? <laughs> so, anyways, I'm trying to divert the situation now, and I asked her, I'm like, oh, you're a psychic investigator, because she had mentioned that. I'm like, oh, how long you been a psychic investigator? She said, oh, well, I think she said something about she's been a psychic her whole life, but she's been doing the work for two years and she has a TikTok page. She's famous on TikTok and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just looking like, okay. And something I wanted to ask her if I could see the page, but my energy was like, no, nope. <laughs> it's like, no, don't ask her nothing else. And she starts talking about her kids and stuff like that. And I'm like, how many kids do you have? And she said she had, she initially had nine, but two are gone, and she has seven. But the whole time I'm thinking, because she had told us that she was homeless, and she had like a, a, a Lord, this, this was a, a interesting day, you all. She was homeless, and she has, she had been staying in the, the area for about five months now. She had to move down here uh, because her FBI boyfriend has been working on her case for five years now and she just moved down here to be closer so she can keep track of the kids and i'm just looking at so you want to tell me you have seven kids and an fbi boyfriend and none of them can get you a place to live okay but i didn't ask that folks i kept it to myself i kept it to myself um but it's it, it was just like a weird a weird experience but it's like Someone tried to get some type of recording because what I got instantly when this woman started talking was that I was supposed to respond a specific way. So it would be the, yep, we have it on recording. She's this way. She's crazy. She's delusional. Lock her up or something or don't give her this or don't do that. It was, that she, I, it was supposed to prove something and, and I don't know what it is, but I'm, I tend to... I'm going to trust my intuition. It was to have me have a conversation with her while someone was recording it. And then they would go back and play this conversation for someone else to make either me seem like mentally unstable, unfit or something of that nature. But it didn't go according to plan because I realized when she would pick up on the fact that I wasn't responding or interacting the way that she wanted me to. She would try to change the, the conversation to something uh, a little different what she thought that it was going to get me to respond. But when I tell you, out of the almost, I don't know if it was like 20 minutes of talking, 30 minutes of talking, I asked this woman two questions and the rest of the time I would say, uh-huh, yeah, that's true, uh-huh. The first question was, how long you been a psychic investigator? And the second question was, how many children you have? And, and that was it. When she left lord my poor baby she first of all during there i don't know if it was 30 minutes or not i'm not spe i'm not specific on the time there's this thing what she would do is that she would gather her bags and we would get excited my daughter and i thinking that she was about to leave but then she would put the bags back down sit down and start talking and they said please just for the love of peace, please just walk away. They just leave us alone. Like we're just trying to finish this work so we can go home. After her doing that for about three or four times, she finally left. And oh Lord, I'm trying to hold in the life, and here goes my child bust 
bursting out laughing. I'm like, mommy, you didn't even let the girl, you didn't even let the woman go across the around the building and hear you all laughing. She said I couldn't hold it anymore. Like, what what's wrong with her? What is wrong with people? And I'm looking like I don't know. Like this is like the weirdest conversation we've ever had that we were not a part of. But I told her what I thought. I'm like, I think she was sent to record something, but she didn't get the recording that she needed. Because when when she was walking away, she didn't seem too happy. It was like, okay, nice nice seeing you all. Bye. And I'm like, okay, bye bye. So the entire, I think like a week or so has gone by. We went back to the library not too long ago. And the same woman, she sees us. We're sitting out there again. Um, and she comes out the building. She sees us, but she doesn't say anything this time. Like she just, I mean, she didn't, the last, the first time we met her, she didn't leave on bad terms. We weren't mean to her or nothing. Uh, we just kind of tried to not enter act with the conversation more than we needed to or more than we wanted to but we were very cordial with her very friendly with her um but the second time like she didn't say nothing to us she literally just walked through walked out the building went to the right sat out there playing music and singing uh these horrendous tunes that sound like me when I'm singing because I'm a terrible singer, but that never stops me from singing, which I told my daughter. I said, she's like me. We don't got no business singing, but it don't stop us from singing, stop us from singing, but let her live her best life. I like the fact that she, you know, she's living her good life through music. Um, but I just found it really interesting that she didn't even acknowledge us this, this second time around. She literally walked out the building and acted like she didn't see us because it's impossible that, we, that she didn't see us. We were the only two people out there when she came outside the building. And she just walked past us. And we both looked up and we said, well, it looks like our friend is not going to say hi to us to, today. Uh, my petty bone kicked in when I initially saw her walking away. I said, is that Star? Is, is that Starcy? And my daughter, <laughs> my daughter bombastic side eyed me and said, mom, not today. <laughs> Yeah. She's like, Mom, not today. Please, not today. <laughs> I'm just asking. Star C did he come to say hi to us today. Like, she just left us out. She just asked my show to see us. Like, what's up with that? And my daughter is just looking at me like, you you don't make nothing better. Like, you just gotta, like, just... You just don't make nothing better. Mm-mm, Mom, something's not right with you. I said, I know, but she still didn't say hi to us today. I was looking forward to Star C say hi to us. But it's just something weird like that. It's like people would try to make things look like what... I'm so sorry for the long story. But it's like a whole collaboration to just make something look like what it is not. Or to make you seem like what you are not. To kind of isolate you. Uh, make you seem to be like a problematic... Uh, have you living in isolation. But the isolation is not a problem for these kind of energies right? Uh, it helps them thrive. Isolation, especially for someone like me, it helps me thrive. Like I, I prefer to be like in my own little bubble because I can think better. I'm able to think a lot more outside the box, which I typically do on a regular basis for me. Like that's how creativity uh, works. So if you're trying to isolate me, you're doing me a favor. I typically don't even like being around people too much. But if I have to, I know how to carry myself in those situations to make sure that whatever needs to be done is done. Um, like, I can be charismatic, but I know how to turn that off to be professional. Like, I, you know, like being multifaceted. Being multifaceted doesn't just have to do with you knowing how to play the piano, knowing how to play volleyball, knowing how to play basketball. You can dance. Uh, you can do this job. It has to do with a personality, personality thing as well. Knowing how to be what you need to be per the situation. Knowing want to be professional. Knowing want to be sarcastic. Uh, knowing want to be diplomatic and things like that. So for me, if you're trying to isolate me, it's helping me because I'm, I'm a homebody. I'm a chronic homebody, chronic introvert, and that's how I kind of prefer to be. So for example, if someone is trying to isolate me, you're not really doing anything to harm me. You are helping me.
you, you, you get my flow? So it's something like that where maybe people have been trying to isolate you to make you feel like you don't belong, like you're beneath them. Like, and typically people that are in this energy, we already understand situation from a higher perspective. We already know what's going on. You may not understand the ending, but we already know the beginning, middle, and ending of the story. You're still at the stage where you feel like if you do this to this star seed, then things are going to go in your favor. You're going to cause them problems and things like that. You may cause them temporary problems, but the problems you're going to end up having are going to be very long and painful, long, hard, and painful. Oftentimes, you're ending up in prison or you end up being rejected by the very people you were working with against that star seed. You end up losing everything, resources, relationships, and things like that. So at the end, you end up doing yourself more damage than you can do to that star seed because there's a contract. Oftentimes, these kind of energies are on and that contract, whatever you're doing, is part of their contract. And they already know this is just a karmic cycle that I am going to need to complete. It's not easy, but I have to make it through this some way, some hard. And sometimes they'll just kind of put their head down and try to power through it, no matter how long it is. Uh, because a lot of the times, the star sees their end of the bargain is just making it through. It's like, we want to make sure, we want to see if you can make it through this. We don't need you to do anything. We don't need you to take any actions. We just need you to focus on what it is we told you to do, on your work and things like that, and leave the rest of us. If you can do that, regardless of what these people are doing to you or trying to do to you, you fulfill your end of the bargain. And a lot of the times, that's all these star seeds have to do. So while you're out here trying to jump through hoops to cause them problems while you're out here trying to annihilate them so that they don't get some type of opportunity or they don't get some type of relationship offer you are causing yourself more problems in the end um because these kind of energies and this is something a lot of you don't understand about spirituality from the dark community these kind of energies life <laughs> Life is set up in a way where it's supposed to go in your favor. Whatever experience you are, whatever experience you are enforcing upon them is oftentimes just for them to learn, right? It's just for their ascension, their benefit. So if you are trying to block opportunities, they're learning through that. So if you did something this way to block an opportunity, for them, they'll see that and say, oh, okay, that's how they blocked that opportunity. Now I know not to go that route. And then if you do something else here, they know how to avoid that or they know how to make it through that. It's not really avoiding because they're supposed to learn how to, they're supposed to learn how to not avoid things. They're supposed to learn how to work their way through things. Like you can't run from everything is what I'm hearing. You're, you can't run from everything. So facing things head on instead of running from them is a lot of the times what these star seeds are supposed to learn because there's something where it's like dark workers they'll get in a place where they say oh if you keep them in an anxious state if you keep them isolated if you keep them rejected and alone and things like that it's going to cause a problem for them but the whole time you're doing that they are learning how to overcome all of those emotions all those experiences and by the time the karmic cycle is over you don't even recognize who it is you're talking to anymore. It's a completely different person. It's that you're supposed to be alone, rejected, out in the cold, sad and disappointed and, you know, just miserable. But what you're seeing is someone that is, like, too sharp for you. They're too honest for you. Uh, their perspective is, like, out of this world. Like, they're a whole lot better than who they were when they started. So, in the end... They've gained what it is they needed to gain in this karmic cycle with you, and you haven't gained nothing because oftentimes you'll end up losing everything coming after these kind of energies, and you don't realize it's a contract. Life is a game. Some of you just take it a little too serious. You you walk around with a lot of hate in you for yourself, but you project that onto other people because you don't like yourself. You want other people not to like themselves. And because those people love themselves, you get other people on a bandwagon to hate them when all in reality is because you hate yourself. It's not because that person did anything to you. So it's okay for you to hate yourself, but just because you hate yourself don't mean you can take that hate 
to somebody else. So there's a woman out here or a group out here that are doing something solely because they hate themselves. And because they hate themselves, they want you to hate yourself. But because you don't hate yourself, it's a problem. It said, we have numbers, you're alone. We can do whatever we want to you. And they say, okay, that's fine, but they're, they've learned the lesson. They're learning the lessons in whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. So at the end of the day, whoever you've been coming after is still going to have that Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, Nine of Cups energy, excuse me, energy, Eight of Pentacles. They're still going to have everything. And they're still going to have their new beginning. You try time and time again as a, as a collective family to stop this new beginning. But it's still coming in. And this is going to have you all pissed off. Like the whole group. Pissed off, angry for, for something that has nothing to do with you. Can you imagine waking up every day and focusing your life on one person? One person. It said, today, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to make sure this star seed does not get any offers. Today, I'm going to wake up and make sure this star seed does not get any offers. Today, I'm, like it's like the, you're waking up and repeating the same day. You're living the same day every day. Losing time, but you don't realize it because you're doing the same thing every day. In and out, every day. It's like being in like a twilight zone. You're just repeating the same day every day. I'm going to wake up like this Darcy. I'm going to wake up like this Darcy. Some of you don't even wash your behinds. You're so focused on blocking this Darcy. It's somebody else in here that I picked up on. Maybe forgetting to wash his or her behind, but they're so focused on stopping this new beginning for our Darcy. They don't even realize they put themselves in some type of fender bender they can't get out of. Why do you want to wake up every day having the same day? And then you're coming after people that aren't paying you any mind because they already understand their contract. You, you're failing to understand and see life from the perspective that you are supposed to. You see how right here, smack dab in the middle, Ten of Cups, Ace of Swords. Ultimate fulfillment that's going to be based on truth, clarity. Okay? So, and this is something that's coming from the divine. I don't know how you all think you can block something that God has destined. It don't, it is, that's a special kind of mental illness. It don't matter how much money you have, how many people you have on your side. If the universe decides that someone is going to have something, they are going to have it. Like, people are in charge of their own destiny. As long as they stick to their contract, whatever they decide that they want to have. They ask the universe for that or the universe deems them worthy of it. They can have that. It's the same thing with like that when people are passing away. Where you end up has to do with your mindset. If you feel like you don't deserve to go somewhere peaceful and high vibrational, yeah, you're going to end up in that in-between where you're just lingering with other souls that put themselves there um, and watching the humans go on with their lives every day. You can't communicate with a lot of them. You can't indulge in what it is they're indulging in. Like if you like smoking cigars when you were alive, you'll be watching people smoking cigars and why you are desiring to have a cigar at, at your lips. Things like that. It's a choice. It's freedom. But some of you, you're just filled with so much hate for people, so much insecurity. And it's not really people, it's yourself. You hate yourself. You're insecure about yourself. And... You're under some type of illusion that if you project your hate, your self-hate onto other people, then it's going to make them hate themselves. Or that if you get 10,000 people to hate one person, and that one person is going to be there, well, the whole world hates me, so I have to hate myself. That's not how it works. These kind of people, you see how there's only one sword here with the hand of the Most High on there? These kind of people... Their validation comes strictly from the most side. It don't come from any humans. Because the human mind is very feeble and weak and it can change at any time. One day you can like someone, the next day you don't like them. But the most high, you see how the hands of the most high is firmly gripping this sword? It's not something that's going anywhere. It's like, and, this, and the most high is the one that took this, this uh, sword out of the cloud, put a crown on it, and put it out there for it to be seen. So that is not some type of support that is going anywhere. It doesn't change. That's that unconditional love that's based on truth and purity and clarity. You don't have to wonder. 
it does does the most high love me today is the most high upset with me today no it's the same every day but you are partner up with people based on superficial reasons you want people to be unhappy because you're unhappy in life you want people to know that you're better than them they don't care if you're better than them you you want people to know you got more money than them they don't care you got more money they say you're wasting your time all these all this time, you all this trouble you went through to incarnate just so you can come out here and be mediocre, have a mediocre personality, have a mediocre life, have a mediocre mindset. Who is better than who? Who likes who? Uh, what do I have on? Who am I married to? That's very mediocre and just insecure as heck. But anyways... The whole group collaborating together, you got problems coming in. Some of you may end up going to prison with that air of source out here, but they'll be losing your jobs and things like that. There is some type of investigation going on uh, you all may not be aware of or you are aware of. And maybe there's some type of work is going on in your community um, that is going to be leading to a lot of problems for you all. And all of this could have been avoided. If you have just left somebody alone, and I think you all did this so someone wouldn't have a new beginning, wouldn't have an opportunity, nothing solid, no solid offers in their life. You don't want someone building a ten of pentacles, so you've been destroying somebody's either work, connections, or things like that. But it's all going to be balanced out. I don't even know like who has this amount of time to invest in something like this, constantly hiring people to do stupid stuff. Constantly hiring people to bully, constantly hiring people to... It's too much. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Stay blessed. I'll see you in my next read. Goodbye for now.